Well, Chris Gale hadn't had a bowl in Test cricket before that. 113 for Andy Flower. He really did play very well and a gutsy effort too from Trevor Gripper. Well, that match nicely set up. We've shown you both of the first getting 100. So we'll go back to that match now in Trinidad. The weather's rather better there, I can assure you. We'll pick it up with his streak bowling to uh, Griffiths at the start of the West Indies second innings. And in the commentary box, Michael Holding and Tony Kozer. throws out, leg before, third ball again, Adrian Griffith goes for a pair, and the West Indies have lost a wicket, as they did in the first innings, to the third ball of the innings. Slightly different circumstances on this occasion, previously in the first innings, the ball was coming back into Adrian Griffith, pitching in line with the stumps and coming back in, and well, this one has kept a little bit low, not really straightening. But I don't think there is any doubt that that would have hit the stumps. If there was any doubt at all, it would have been where it pitched. But it certainly looked to have pitched in line. Mr. Buckner thought so as well. West Indies lose their first wicket with nothing on the board. So for the second successive time, Chris Gale finds himself coming in in the first over at number three to replace Adrian Griffin. But a job to do now. First ball, sensational start here, similar to the Zimbabwean start when they lost both openers without scoring. And the West Indies are two wickets down without a single run on the board. Heat streak, the leading Zimbabwean bowler, and this is why right on target again. No serious problems there with the bounce on this occasion, just a gap between bat and pad. And the gap found two for nothing, the West Indies. New batsman Shivnarayan Chandapal comes in in the first over with two wickets down and nothing on the board. Come on. So Campbell off the mark with a flowing extra cover drive. Ball will just win the race. gone through struck it pretty well a little bit of the way off with the body but it goes all the way for four that's a Sherwin Campbell special that's his favorite shot and he really hit that one like a rocket it's a very positive response by these two batsmen Another boundary to Chandapal. Outside edge, but no bounce whatsoever, so it wasn't likely to fly to slip. It's gone all along the ground for four. Frustrating for the bowler. don't think they think that they've got him. Goodwin flicked it back onto the stumps. Quick work. He held his head, which gave the indication that he didn't think it. Well, he's still on the ground. Here's Campbell. He doesn't look uh, that impressed about this. I think he thinks he's gone. Let's have a look. Well, I think he's on the line, which is out, but it's a tough one. And uh, he's given in. So Sherwin Campbell goes run out. Very swift piece of work by Murray Goodwin in a short leg. And Campbell diving home for the second time in the morning. Couldn't quite make it. Inch or so short, perhaps just on the line. An umpire Clyde Cumberbatch sends him. So the West Indies have lost their, lost their third wicket and there's still 12 runs in arrears. Desperate times for the new West Indies captain, Jimmy Adams. He's found the gap. 
put away the full toss well. And listen to the roar around the ground. They, they really want something here. Full toss, so John Defoe puts it away, and Mango is quite quick over ground. And the outfield has been uh, slightly slowed up by the rain. Whipped away rather nicely there by Chandler Paul. He's not going to get four. The field, I think, will just get there. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what the third umpire has to say about this. Yeah, he's touching the knee. The left knee is on the line there as his hand is on the ball. And uh, four is signaled. Now that one kept very low and yet he got it away. Hooray, a boundary at last. Brings up the 100, something to cheer about at last. Brings up the lead of just over 50 as well. 52 runs now the lead by the West Indies. Caught at extra cover, or should I say square cover, very similar to the previous shot by Chandapal, which just fell short of mid-off. Now Adams, reaching a little bit further outside the off stump, lobs a catch into the hands of Brian Murphy, a breakthrough, a crucial breakthrough for Zimbabwe, and Adams' rather tortured innings comes to an end with the West Indies 115 for four. Change of bowling, took a wicket, and Bangwari bowled so accurately, Alonga just bowled it a little bit fuller, Adams thought he was in for some runs, but it cost him his wicket. He's out for 27 of 118 deliveries, and the West Indies lose their fourth wicket for 115. Wavell Hines, the new batsman. Yes, out. He streak gets another leg before decision. Chandapal goes, so a partnership which had added 78 now loses both of the batsmen who were associated in it and gloomy faces around the Queen's Park Oval as the West Indies have slumped to 115 for five. Zimbabwe have this match in a very vice-like grip. Well, the decision that umpire Bucknell had to make was, was it going to go down the leg side? It's pitched on, it's hit, he's saying, that's going to hit middle and leg. And as uh, the right leg of Chandapur goes in the air, you see the middle and leg stumps immediately behind where the ball made contact. Heath Streak has done the job asked of him by his captain. He's their main strike bowler. That's just what he's done. Chandapur out one short of a half century. And that lead's still only 66, but only five wickets in hand now for the West Indies. Ridley Jacobs now comes in to join Wavell Hines, who's only been out there two balls. Again, and this time he's got him. Two very similar deliveries. This one, though, umpire George Sharp is happy enough that it pitched on the leg stump and would have hit. And this delivery not uh, reverse swinging. This one, if anything, angling back into him. Pitches on leg stump. It's going to hit leg stump. And uh, George Sharp agrees. And Henry Alonga delighted. What a big wicket it is for him and Zimbabwe. They really sensing victory now. Jacob's gone for naught. One one eight for six. Well, we might have expected to see Franklin Rose coming out, but it's not. It's Kirtley Ambrose. He's out, surely. Yes, just a little nod from uh, the umpire. And Kirtley Ambrose has to go. He waited a long time, but he'd seen the nod from umpire Steve Buckner. And uh, a bat pad take by Neil Johnson at City Point. And Kirtley Ambrose is out now. He edged onto the pad. Straight to Neil Johnson. They all know it. And... Uh, 
The umpire just a little nod of the head. Kirky Ambrose walks off for one, and West Indies are really struggling now. Seven down for 1-1-9. Franklin Rose on his way out to the wicket. He's the new batsman. may be the answer he has a go at this one and he's hit it well four runs just wide Johnson may just have got the fingertips to it goes for four wide to his right and going away from him that's well placed and well timed and will go for four yeah. caught behind wants to know if it's taken cleanly did take the edge go, goes through to the keeper Ampa Bucknow is asking whether the ball did carry that's the question Flower is convinced that it did well, I think everyone is convinced that it did. I think Franklin Rose isn't too sure, but I think it's obvious that it did carry. The edge was taken. I would think it's 142 for eight. Right in, no doubt about it. He tells Franklin Rose the bad news that he's out. It's 142 for eight, so his new gloves only lasted one ball. Rion King is the number 10 batsman coming in for the West Indies. And there's more. Have to hurry. Uh, this might be tight. Yes, umpire Sharp is referring it to the third umpire, Clyde Cumberbatch. It's unwise to take on the arm of Henry Olonga. He's got a fantastic arm, a beautiful pickup, and in it comes low, flat, bouncing in front of the keeper. I think he might be gone. The fielder obscuring that shot, but I think he's beaten. Where's the red light? Anxious wait. And there it comes, and delight for the Zimbabweans. Good fielding by Henry Alonga, and a real disaster for the West Indies. Well, again, an incredible reception for Courtney Walsh, as though he was the saviour coming to the wicket. 